Cinema 5D Stage at Photo and Adventure is brought to you by Blackmagic Design, creating amazing solutions for film, post-production, and television. Rotolite, advanced LED lighting, and Canon, live for the story. Welcome to the afternoon sessions at Photo Adventure 2019 at the Cinema 5D Film and Video Stage. I'm here with Joe Lorick from Canon. Hello. Thank you for coming. Um, actually, I wanted you guys to do a presentation about EF lenses that are originally made for photography, but because there are over 80 different EF lenses from Canon, which is crazy, um, there are, of course, a lot of them that people don't know about and special EF lenses that are actually great for filmmaking that people forget about. Yeah. Thank you, Nino. You're completely right. There are a lot of uh, lenses that can be used for video as well as for photo. Uh, special lenses, but also for low budget, uh, very interesting lenses I want to talk to, uh, about today. And I think this is very interesting for people here at this show, which is mainly a photography show for people who are photographers who are also starting to film. So I leave the stage to you and see you, you in Nino. half an hour. Yes, thank you. So, like Nino already said, uh, we have more than 80 lenses EF lenses uh, right now, and what is maybe also interesting that there are uh, more than 140 million lenses already produced. So there's really a bunch of lenses out there in the world that you might use for videography. The benefits uh, EF lenses uh, for filmmakers is uh, you have an autofocus on each lens, uh, and together with the dual pixel autofocus function of the recent EOS uh, cinema cameras or DSLR cameras, uh, they are really perfect for autofocus control. You also have automatic iris control. There are dust and water ceilings in most of our professional lenses. And also, as I mentioned before, they are low priced compared to the cinema lenses and cine zooms. Many lenses are equipped with optical image stabilizer for freehand photography or for filming as well. Of course, there are some disadvantages uh, over cine lenses as well. Um, the color between different lenses is not perfectly matched like on uh, cine lenses. So if you take one lens and then put another lens on the body, you might have a slight uh, color differences compared to cine lenses. And also you have focused breathing on some lenses. Um, it's more difficult for the rig assembly. Uh, then there's the f-stop instead of t-stop information on the EF lenses, and there's no PL mount available. But we have special technologies on our EF lenses uh, that I mentioned on this slide. It's the optical image stabilization that really helps uh, to avoid blurry and shaky um, films and, and, and uh, pictures. We have the ultrasonic motor uh, that's almost silent fast autofocus mo motor or there's STM motor that is very good for video and the brand new technology is the nano USM silent very fast autofocus mode. Perfect, really perfect for video. Then we have uh, special types of glass um, with special refraction properties like BR, UD, or Super UD lenses on our EF lenses. Then there are special diffraction lenses, DO lenses available, and they have uh, surface coating technologies like ASC, SVC. These are all technologies that help you to get a perfect picture. And the lens range for EF lenses, it comes from eight millimeters up to 800 millimeters. And uh, if you use an extender, you can uh, double it to 1,600 millimeters focal length, and that's perfect uh, for wildlife. Uh, but let's talk about the low-budget lenses. Uh, the EFS uh, 10 to 18 millimeter is affordable. It's a wide angle. It's really useful for for k crop EOS cameras or Super 35 cinema EOS models. It has the STM autofocus uh, motor and image stabilizer and an unbeatable price for low-budget. There's some uh, sample pictures of the mentioned lenses always. The next one is the EFS 17 to 55 2.8 IS USM. That's a universal zoom with constant speed, 2.8. It's got an image stabilizer, uh, universal focal, uh, focal length, and is a very good close-up range up to 35 centimeters. The next low budget lens I want to mention is the EFS 18 to 135 zoom lens. Um, 
with also power zoom adapter available for this lens. Uh, that's very useful for videography because you can uh, do a motor zoom with this lens, with this accessory. There's got the Silent Nano, who is an autofocus and is also an unbeatable price in performance ratio. Another lens uh, is the EFS 35 Macro IS STM lens. This is equipped with a built-in LED ring light. This is a constant light. You can not only use it for flash photography, but also use it as a constant light for video filming. It's got also image stabilizer and STM for soft focus rights for an unbeatable price. The next lenses are uh, very unique autofocus lenses, uh, uh, high-speed lenses with 1.2 autofocus lenses. Uh, only Canon has got these full-frame 1.2 autofocus lenses. Um, that is very good for a very nice bokeh because of the shallow depth of field. Also for filming, not only for photo. Uh, it's available for 50 or 85 millimeters. Of course, with this open aperture, it's very hard to uh, focus accur accurate. You really need to control your focus with these lenses. And the dual pixel autofocus uh, system on our cameras is perfect for tracking the focus. Just to mention on that. Then there's an EF85 1.4 LIS USM lens. This has also a top bokeh. Uh, it is top sharpness with open aperture. It's brand new. It's got the image stabilizer and a very fast autofocus. This is very good in combination with our face detection dual pixel autofocus systems on our cameras. You can see the nice bokeh on this picture. And also, also there's a large selection of, su of super telephoto lenses, as I mentioned before. Uh, very interesting for nature and wildlife uh, photography and filming. From 200 millimeters up to 800 millimeters. Um, and we have a power focus um, function for smooth focus, uh, motor focus shift that is also very helpful on uh, video. And also we've got a uh, wide, shortest wide angle focal length with full frame IF. Uh, that's the 1124 with a speed of four. Comes with an uh, angle of few up to a one to six. It's almost distortion uh, free. It's really unbelievable. I got this lens in my hand the first time and I could not believe for a zoom wide angle how perfect this lens is. It is weather sealed, dust and weather sealed. It has fast and noiseless autofocus. You can see here the perspective is perfect. And we have the 24 to 70 f4 lens, also equipped with image stabilizer. Uh, it's got a hybrid IS, professional quality, constant light intensity. It's sealed and fast, silent autofocus. Then there's the 100 2.8 macro IS lens, also equipped with image stabilizer. That's a hybrid image stabilizer that also helps you not only for the angular, but also for the shift blurring. Uh, helps you to get a steady picture so, as well as uh, on photo and video. It's got a very nice bokeh if you use it on 2.8. It's perfect for ideal macro photography and filming. Also, there's a longer macro, that's 183.5. Uh, sometimes you need uh, more distance to the subject that they are filming. Um, therefore, you would need the 180 macro, um, because it can easily happen that uh, the animals run away if you get too close. And that's the reason why you need a longer focal view macro. And then we have a special lens, the MPE 65 macro photo lens with a very high scale, uh, up to 5 to 1. <clears throat> it's a replacement 
<coughs> for bellows constructions, and this is the only lens of this kind with automatic iris. I will show you an example picture here. You can see the magnification of the coins, one to one, three to one, and five to one. This is a very, very special macro lens. You get, can get easily you can get uh, macro, uh, microscopic, uh, microscopic pictures with that. The next picture will show uh, all our image stabilized, uh, stabilized uh, lenses, the range of our lenses with image stabilizer. You see it's quite a lot. And it helps you to avoid blurry pictures and films. So the next I want to come to is uh, tilt-shift lenses. And this is a very useful uh, technique for photo and maybe also interesting for filming. You can uh, change the focal plane. You can uh, make perspective corrections and control the focal plane. And there are different uh, focal lengths available from 17 millimeters up to 135 millimeters. The last three, they are macro lenses. With the next slides, I can show you what you can do with these tilt-shift lenses. You can correct the perspective. So if you make a picture or a film, a movie from a building from down up, you can see the, the lines, they are not really uh, perfect straight. And you can correct this with the perspective control and the shift function of tilt-shift uh, lenses. This is very useful for architecture. But you can also do a realignment without camera movement. So if you have the wrong position, you can shift to the right position easily without any loss of quality. But what is also very helpful is that you can avoid obstacles or reflections. So in, in this case, you can see the tree standing in front of the wall. And you don't want to have the tree there, so you can shift it away easily. You have the same picture without the tree. That's quite easy. So if you cannot move the camera because it's on the tripod, you can move with the shift function of the lens. But you also can uh, avoid reflections. If you are in the front of the mirror, you want to film the mirror, and you don't want to see yourself in the mirror, just shift it away, the reflection. You can see it on that picture. You will not be seen. But besides the shift effect, there's also a very interesting tilt effect. What I will come to now, the tilt effects can move the focal plane. So you don't have the focal plane in just one distance, but you can tilt it. And there are different variations you can tilt the lens. This example is tilting on the ground level. So we have the uh, sharpness from the front to the back. Everything's sharp independent of the aperture that you are using. So the depth of field is not necessary. necessary. You don't, don't have to close the aperture. You can just use the tilt effect for this. But you can also do it di diagonal. You cannot do this with an aperture. You can just say, my sh sharpness goes from right low level onto left upper level. So this is very, very nice, tricky filming or taking pictures. I will uh, show some example pictures a little later. You can also tilt in the opposite direct direction. This makes, brings you a very, very shallow depth of field without using the aperture again. So you can close the aperture, but still select what you want to have, what, what, sharp, what you want to have sharp. And this is one example for the diagonal focal plane. If you look at the girl, it, it is sharp, as well as the, both of the balls she is focusing at, and also the game on the left side. It needs some adjustment to find the right focal plane for your purposes, uh, but if you're on the tripod and you just check the picture, you can adjust it and then take your film. This is also a very good example. If you do food photography or filming, you want to see from front to the back everything sharp, and you can use this lens for this. But if you want to highlight some parts of the picture or of, of the film, 
Uh, you can use part partial sharpness, like the, fo the f I think it's a 400 that you can read in the middle, and the rest is unsharp. So this is re really very useful for selective sharpness, these kind of lenses. As you can see on this portrait, the eyes are sharp, the chin and the hair unsharp. So if you just want to focus on the eyelashes, you can do it with these lenses. But also you can point the dancing couple that is sharp here, point out that this, this uh, couple is interesting and the rest is unsharp. Also, you can concentrate on one couple and the others are not sharp. Of course, this is very difficult if they are moving around for filming, but I just want to show you some examples what you can do with tilt and shift lenses. And also, what you might have seen already is the miniature effect. So you can do some shots from the roof and, and tilt the lens so it looks like a miniature. And there are some electronic function on some devices that they can do this too, but this is with losing information. With these lenses, you don't, won't lose any pixel because this is optical correction and all the information is still in the picture. This is much better than if you do it in post. So I want to say be creative and have fun experimenting with these lenses. If you have any questions or if you want to see these lenses, how they work, Please come to the Canon booth. We have the tilt shift lenses here. You can experiment with the photo cameras. You can put it on a, your cinema camera as well. Uh, so be creative. Use what we, what we give. Um, the second part of uh, my presentation will be what else we got besides the EF lenses. We also have a compact servo lenses, two uh, lenses that can be very useful in a low uh, budget production. These are cine lenses. They are not available, available for photo cameras. They are still only for video cameras. It's the CNE 18 to 80 4.4 and CNE 70 200 4.4. Um, it's very interesting because it's a kind of hybrid lens or it's lenses. Uh, because they combine uh, the cine style with the ENG, electronic, electronic news gathering functions, uh, and the EF still photo functions. They are all combined like a hybrid in one, all in one lens. You have manual operability, you have EF functions like AF, IS, etc. And there's also optional servo hand grip that you can uh, put on the lens to use it as an ENG camera. I will show it again in this slide. On the left side, you have the photo lens features. Uh, outside the inner circle, you see the full frame coverage because these Cine Servo zoom lenses, they are built for Super 35 uh, sensors, not for full frame sensors. But they have the feature of EFL lenses like autofocus, image stabilizer, uh, automatic exp exposure control, you have the power via mount, uh, via the EF mount. You have correction functions like chromatic aberration and peripheral light um, corrections. And you can remote control the lens via the camera. Coming from the cinema lens features, um, we have also a lot of features that makes the lens like a cinema lens. The, it means the lens is parfocal that it won't lose the focus if you're zooming. Compared to the EF lenses, um, it has a minimal focus breathing and stepless iris. If you use an EF lens that I mentioned before, you also always have steps for the aperture. If you want to fit in or fade out, you will always see the steps on EF lenses, not on the cine lenses you have stepless iris for fade in, fade out on these lenses. And you also have the cinematic look for the color balance and bokeh characteristic on these cine server lenses. And the BCTV ENG lens features means that you can put the camera on your shoulder and just do your news report with this camera. And this feature, together with the grip, you have 
You have record on and off functions from the grip, the server zoom control, and remote zoom control capabilities. So if you take the left side of this picture, you can see how the shooting will be uh, done with hand-carried lenses. You don't need the, uh, the hand grip for hand-carried uh, use of this lens. You can control everything via the uh, zoom buttons and focus functions directly on the lens. But if you equip the lens with the ENG style uh, grip, ZSG C10, that's the name of this grip. Uh, you can make it an ENG lens camera. You can see it on the right side. Put the camera on the shoulder, and you have the zoom rocker like you're used to have on the ENG cameras, and all the control on your shoulder. So either go with hand carried or ENG. So this will be my last slide already. I just want to summarize uh, the advantages and disadvantages of the use of ES, EF lenses compared to uh, the broadcast lenses. Uh, most of the things I mentioned already before. On the EF lenses, uh, you have IF, AF priority operability, almost no manual torque on the focus. Compared to that, on the uh, broadcast side, you have um, the feel of a manual torque for manual focusing. Um, more viewing angle variations uh, depending on the focus on the EF side. That means uh, that the angle of, of uh, viewing angle varies if you zoom, uh, if you focus, but not on the um, PCTV lens. It stays constant. That doesn't mind if you take a picture, but if you do focusing on the video and the angle of view changes, it might disturb. High accuracy autofocus based on the camera function on the F side and on the BCTV side, you have it equipped with cinema pitch gear for follow focus use. So it's a different approach. Also on the zoom, on the zoom, there's no focus tracking while zooming on the EF side. If you take a photo lens and you zoom during filming, uh, you might lose your focus, and that might disturb the eye of the, of the, the, guy, of the audience. Uh, it's essential on the video side. If you do um, zooming on the BCTV lens, the focus must stay where it is. So there's, it's quite a difference of these two approaches. You have a heavier torque and lower smooth operation on the EF zoom lenses because it's not made for s smooth zooming. Compared to this, you have the zoom rocker or uh, manual uh, smooth zooming on the cine lenses. And also the length of, this, of the photo zoom, it varies. So it might, on some lenses, it might change. On the cine lenses, the length of the lens is always the same, no matter what focal length you're using. Especially with rigging, this could be complicated on video purposes. Also, you don't have aperture rings on photo lenses, but you have a manual aperture ring on the cine lenses. And what else to say? Of course, what I mentioned before, the EF lenses, they have big advantages. First of all, it's a really good cost performance, so it's a low budget, has good quality, it's compact, lightweight, and easy to handle. There's diverse type with a wide range of choices. Color differences occur with, with each lens. That's not the benefit, but if you stick on one lens, that's okay then, maybe. And all the EF lenses, not the EFS, but the EFS lenses are made for full format. So for 36 to, uh, 36 to uh, 24 millimeter full frame sensors. The Cine broadcast lenses, they are made for 4K opti optimal optical performance. And uh, the Cine servo zooms that I just presented, they are also for low cost. They are not so expensive. They combine both worlds. Uh, but you also have the flangeback adjustment function, what is essential for, uh, for video, and the color design based on cinema and video recording. If you change from one lens to the other cine lens, as I mentioned before, there's no difference in the color. And it's made for super, super 35 image size. So basically that's it. So 
if you need or look for some special lenses on the EF side, photo lenses, don't be shy. Just take it, try it out. Especially the tilt shift lenses, I love. They are really very, very nice. And also the open aperture lenses, the 1.2 lenses. If you need a really nice bokeh, trust the dual picture autofocus of the Canon cameras. It will work perfectly and gives you a really nice cine style for, for less money than for a really high expensive uh, broadcast lens. But if you look for news gathering, give it a try and take a cine of a zoom lens. That's all for me today. Thank you for... Having me, thank you, Nino. Thank you very much. Very interesting. I think a lot of people, when they hear about Canon, first think about the camera company, but it's really, I mean, you guys have such a huge range of lenses, and that, I think, is the advantage over a lot of the competitors, is the choice, and actually that you can use those lenses also on all the other cameras, yes, basically. Yes, thank you. Thank you. All right. Yes. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Uh, we move on to the next point here on the Photo and Adventure 2019 uh, Cinema 5D live stage. Uh, we'll have a panel discussion or presentation by Kaino. Kaino is a really cool post-production software that helps you with logging and preparing your footage for editing. And a lot of people don't know about it yet. And uh, we think it should be different. It's going to be uh, Wolfram Zöttl and uh, Robert Krüger uh, talking about Kaino. So stay tuned for the next uh, live stream. And thanks for watching. <laughs>